Okay, the next topic is errors in measurement. Error is nothing but the difference between the measured value and the true value. The difference between the measured value, the value which we are measured on a particular element and the st standard value is called as error. Uh, it is the difference between the measured value and the true value of the measured dimension. It is never possible to measure the true value of a dimension. There is always some error. Uh, and uh, the error in measurement may be expressed or evaluated as an absolute error. It may be expressed or evaluated either as an absolute error or an relative error. Then what is maybe absolute error? It is the distance between the measured value and the true value of the quantity measured. It is the distance between the measured value. Measured value means uh, is nothing but the value which we got the measurement for the particular element or the measured element and the true value of the quantity to be measured. Okay. What is, there are two different types of absolute error. One is true absolute error and another one is apparent absolute error. It is the difference, algebraic difference between the result of measurement and conventional true value of the measurement is known as true absolute error. The difference, the algebraic difference between the measure, measured value and the conventional true value of the quantity is called as true absolute error. Then what is the apparent absolute error? It is nothing but the algebraic, uh, the, if we find out the value in a, of a particular element and get the value of a series of measurements, then we took one value from the result and the arithmetic mean of all the results and we should find out some, uh, we should get some difference between the algebraic difference of a particular value and the arithmetic mean value is known as apparent absolute error. It is the algebraic dif difference between one of the results in the series of measurement and arithmetic mean of series of measurement is known as apparent absolute error. Apparent absolute error. Then what is the relative error? It is not, nothing but there is a ratio between the absolute error and the measured value. The relative error is a ratio between the absolute error and the measured value. So we know what is maybe abs absolute error. It is a comparison between or the value of comparison may be the true value and the conventional true value or the arithmetic mean of series of measurement is known as absolute error. So the error depends upon some factors. The relative error depends upon some factors. It may be the calibration standard should be changed. The calibration standard change, if, if the calibration standard change, the relative error occurs. Then there is a problem in the workpiece or an element. There is a problem in the workpiece or an element, the relative error may occur. And if the workpiece, if the work, uh, sorry, uh, and the instrument, if in the instrument, if there is any deviations or uh, uh, any uh, problems, the relative error may occur. And person, person is a person's uh, error mean is nothing but the observational or recorded error. Uh, when while we while he observe the uh, value or uh, recording while recording the values, he may put some errors or uh, deviations. And uh, environment, the while we check the measurement environment if the environment changes the relative error may occur then the different types of errors normally the uh, errors are classified into three categories one is gross error systematic error and random error gross error systematic error and random error 
in systematic error there are three types of errors one is instrumental error observational error and environmental error next one is gross error gross error is also called as parasitic errors gross error is also called as parasitic errors these errors varies in an unpredictable manner this error we can't uh, predict this type of errors it is it always occur in the unpredictable manner uh, these errors mainly covers the human mistakes in readings recording and calculating measurement results uh, these uh, while with the humans or the observers which, uh, while we while, he ta while they take the readings and uh, record that readings and calculating the measuring or uh, putting some calculations they may uh, did some uh, mistakes uh, so we call it as also a gross error and it occurs due to the fault of the person using the instrument the observer or the operator make some fault in while while they take the reading uh, on a particular device that is called as gross error the some of the examples of gross error are uh, incorrect reading incorrect recording and incorrect use of uh, instruments then uh, the how we can avoid these type of errors this type of errors can avoided by uh, the greater must uh, care must be taken uh, in reading and recording the data while they while the operator uh, get the readings from the particular element or particular operation uh, they should take more care uh, while they take the reading and recording the data uh, while we take a reading if we can't satisfy on the particular reading we should take two or two three or more type uh, uh, readings uh, taken for the particular quantity under the measurement that is called as uh, how that in that way we can avoid the gross errors then systematic errors uh, error in instrument or in the design of instrument systematic error is nothing but the error which may occurs in the instrument or design of the experiment uh, sometimes the instrument make some errors while we take the reading or the design of the experiment uh, while, while we design the experiment process uh, we make some errors that is called as the systematic error cannot be estimated by repeating the experiment with the same equipment if the instrument makes that errors we can't able to uh, repeat the experiment with the same e equipment we, we, are, we have to change the equipment to find out the output uh, the causes of these errors may be known or unknown this systematic errors may cause with a known error or, or, or the uh, unknown process we can't able to find out that how the error came or, or how the error occurs this error may be constant or variable this in this systematic error the errors may be constantly maintain that error or it may be vary it may be vary. and these errors are repetitive in nature these errors are repetitive in nature types of systematic errors there are static error and dynamic Two types of systematic errors are there one is static error and dynamic error then what is the static error it is caused various components in a measuring device this static error cause in a various components uh, while we using in a measuring device various components uh, are used in this uh, particular measuring device uh, for in that for that purpose these errors may occur then environmental effects and other properties which influence the apparatus are also the reason for static error. The environmental effects, uh, the surrounding uh, may also uh, give some error in the apparatus and uh, influ uh, other properties uh, also influence the apparatus or, uh, so that uh, this uh, static error may occur. Then dynamic error. This uh, dynamic error, uh, the instrument is not uh, responding very fast enough to follow the changes in the measured variable. In the measured variable, the measure vari variable is uh, changed in a fast manner, but the system will not uh, follow the changes in the measured 
telemetry. It is caused due to time variance in the measurement. Uh, this uh, elements or uh, this uh, uh, the error may cause uh, due to the time variations in the particular measurement. Then types of systematic error. There are different types of systematic errors are there. One is instrumental error, observational error and environmental error. Then what is the instrumental error? This error due to the fault of the particular instrument. Uh, this error normally occurs on the particular instrument so that we can't able to find out the uh, accurate value uh, but the error may occur uh, every time while using this uh, fault instrument. Some instrumental errors may occur due to the friction in bearings then in the instrument's moving components then the instrument's uh, spring irregular spring tension then stretching of spring spring stretching may also some uh, error occurs and overloading of the instrument uh, overloading of the instrument means some external uh, elements we may use in this uh, particular instrument so that uh, the instrument may get overloaded and uh, causes the errors okay how we can avoid the instrumental errors to avoid the instrumental error we should select the suitable instrument for the particular measuring element we should select the suitable instrument for the particular measuring element and applying correction factor after determination of instrumental errors after we find out the de instrumental uh, determination of instrumental for the, uh, instrumental error we should applying the correction factor we know uh, due to this instrument we, uh, the, the error may occur so we have to apply the correction factor we have to change the instrument and find out the value and calibrate it calibrate the instrument against the standard we should calibrate instrument time to time to get the accurate value then observation error these errors are done by the observers observers are nothing but the operators or uh, the reading takers the types types of observational errors are reading error parallax error interpolation error reading error is nothing but indication of an instrument by the observer which means the instrument indicate one value but the observer noted another value incorrect reading of the indication of an instrument by the observer the observer which noted the incorrect value which indicates by the instrument okay then parallax error the parallax error is nothing but the reading is not made in the direction of observation parallax error is nothing but we have to note the value in a straight direction but we uh, but sometimes we uh, note the value in an angular direction the, these kind of wrong aspects we get the wrong value then the last one is interpolation error inexact evaluation of the position of the index it is named called as inexact evaluation while we evaluate the output of the va uh, value or uh, the measured output we can't uh, get the exact value but we get the value as a adjacent value the instrument shows one value but we took or record the adjacent value of that particular value then environmental error this environmental error occurs due to external conditions to the measuring device or measuring element it may cause by the temperature humidity air or pressure dust or vibrations on the particular instrument we can eliminate this environmental error by maintaining proper atmospheric conditions using the air conditioner or magnetic shields calibration of the instrument at the place of use uh, the particular place should maintain a proper surface or uh, the instrument should be in a calibrated manner sealing certain components in the instruments in the instrument we should 
lock the uh, components on a particular manner. Then automatic devices are used to compensate the FX. Some automatic devices uh, we should use to compensate the uh, surrounding FX. That is called as the, in that uh, in these uh, conditions we we should eliminate the environmental error. Then random error. A random error is nothing but it may cause and they occur when all the systematic er errors have been accounted. All the systematic errors have been accounted to cause these type of random errors. Uh, these errors caused by the factors randomly affect the measurement, uh, the variable across the sample. It may cause sudden change in the conditions or noise and tiredness of the working persons. Maybe it is a positive error or a negative error. We can avoid these random errors increasing the number of readings process and statistical means to obtain the best approximate value we should uh, getting the statistical of the number of readings and get the approximate true value then the different types of sources or causes of error the next topic is sources or causes of errors the different causes of errors are errors due to deflection then misalignment, contact pressure or stylus pressure, then poor contact, vibrations, dirt, wear in gauges, looseness, parallax effect. Errors due to deflection. They get deformed or deflected on a long boss. While we get the long boss uh, measurement, it may get uh, deformed or deflected while we taking the measurement. Uh, so that we get the error in the particular conditions. Then misalignment. Errors due to misalignment. The axis of the measurement of the measured part should coincide with the axis of the measurement of the measuring instrument. Then only we can avoid this misalignment. If the alignment is not in a proper manner, the error may occur on a particular element. Then contact pressure or stylus pressure the variations in the variations in the contact pressure between anvils of the instrument and workpiece being measured produce a considerable difference in reading the deformation of the workpiece and stylus of instrument depend upon the contact pressure and shape of the contact surfaces and due to poor contact this to avoid this type of errors the gauges with a lesser area of contact should be used while measuring irregular a curved surface and correct pressure should be applied while making the contact contact of jaws with workpiece plays an important role in a measurement in a laboratory or workshops then errors due to vibrations Errors due to vibrations ca can be avoided by the following measures. The following some of the measures uh, that uh, locating the laboratory away from the sources of vibrations. If we locate the laboratory uh, from the away from the uh, sources of vibrations, then only we can avoid this uh, vibrati vibration error. Then keeping slipping cork felt rubber pads under the cage. We should keep this cork, uh, slipping cork, then rubber pads, then uh, fill uh, under the cage means uh, we can uh, reduce this uh, vibrations. Then mounting the gauge pedestal and floor sections on a tar resin. We should mount the gauge pedestal and the floor sections on the tar resin. Then only we can avoid the vibrations. Putting a gauge on a surface plate, resting in tan on a heavy plate then on, uh, by these conditions by using these conditions we can avoid the vibrations then uh, avoid due to error due to dirt we should avoid this dirt to reduce the error uh, dirt particles can enter the inspection room through the door and the windows if these foreign matters such as dirt chips etc are present between datum and workpiece surface the error will be introduced in the reading checker then uh, errors due to wear gauges. Wear of measuring surfaces of the instrument occurs due to repeated use. 
this uh, this type of errors can be avoided by hardening the surface by using the chrome plated parts for contact surfaces then errors due to looseness the looseness can be tested by setting the gauge contact on a gauge anvil and zeroing the meter and zeroing the meter and then applying the finger pressure or a light tab to each location where looseness might be expected and note the readings again we should uh, tighten the loose object or product then only we can find out the proper output then error due to parallax effects error due to parallax effect it is a reading error which is produced uh, when with the index at a certain distance from a surface of scale the reading is not made in the direction of observation provided for the instrument use so the parallax er error which occurs in a wrong way of getting the output so we should always uh, maintain the correct uh, view on a instrument and uh, find out the value we can reduce the this type of errors by separating the between the scale and a pointer to a minimum and uh, placing a mirror behind the pointer to ensure normal reading of the scale in all cases this is called as uh, parallax effect uh, due to parallax effect the errors may occur okay uh, now the last topic is types of standards what is meant by standard standard is nothing but it is a reference for assigning a numerical value to a measured quantity already we studied so many times what is meant by standard now again we have studied standard elaborately it is a reference value to a measured quantity or a reference value which we are going to compare with the measured quantity that is called standard then there are two standards are followed for linear measurement one is british or english yard another one is metric or meter standard there are two different standards are followed for the linear measurement one is british or english standard english yard yard and another one is metric or meter standard then this metric or meter standard is followed by most of the countries in the world normally this standard metric or meter standard is followed by most of the countries all over the world uh, yard is followed by some uh, one or uh, some of the countries only but most of the countries follow this metric or meter standard then what are the types of standard normally we are calculate the measurement linear measurement this linear measurement classify the types of standards the types of standards are line standard n standard and wavelength standard the types of standards are line standard n standard and wavelength standard now we are going to see what is meant by line standard when the length being measured is expressed as the distance between two engraved lines then it is called as line standard distance between two engraved lines is called as line standard examples measuring scales imperial standard yard international prototype meter etc what is meant by engraved uh, this engraved line means it may be done with the help of some scriber on a surface or any pencil on the surface or any point on the surface pointing line is on the surface these are called engraved lines 
the distance between the two engraved lines some scratches on the surface uh, between the two scratched surfaces is called as line standard the figure also we can see that distance between the two engraved lines the some scratches on the square surface some scratches or end may be uh, a reference a reference between the two uh, distances uh, is called as line standard the distance between the two reference line it may be also called as a reference line or engraved lines is called as line standards then end standard what is meant by end standard when the length being measured is expressed as the distance between two parallel surfaces two parallel surfaces the distance between the two parallel surfaces is called in standard it can be made to a very high degree of accuracy example strip gauges gap gauges end of micrometer anvils etc the distance between the two parallel surfaces is called in standard normally these in standards or uh, we can see in the slip gauges or uh, in the micrometer anvils there are two uh, parallel surfaces that is called n standard wavelength standard in order to overcome the drawbacks of line standard and n standard it became necessary to have a standard which will be accurate and invariable to overcome the drawbacks of the line standard and n standard the standard which will be accurate accurate and uh, invariable invariable means it cannot be variable it cannot be variable and it should be always accurate so for that purpose we are going for the wavelength standard wavelength of monochromatic light can be used as natural and invariable unit with the help of wavelength of a monochromatic light source we can able to find out the length which is a invariable unit that is called wavelength standard then subdivision of standards the standards of measurement can be classified as four different standards one is international standard second one is primary standard third one is secondary standard fourth one is working or territory standard first one international standard this standard is defined by the international agreement they are maintained at the international bureau of weight and measure in france these international standards is followed by the all over the world international level the standards are followed all over the world internationally and these standards may uh, get started from the uh, research laboratory or uh, followed by the standards from the france they have the international bureau for the weight and measure which can be created to the international level standards this international level standards periodically evaluated and checked by absolute measurements in terms of fundamental units these measurements are uh, evaluated periodically and checked by the absolute measurements in the fundamental units the certain units of measurement to the closest possible accuracy attainable by the science of technology attainable by the science of technology these are called international standard then primary standards it is only one material standard and it is preserved under the most careful conditions this primary standards followed for the only one material 
for each and every material they follow some standards so under we should preserve this type of standards under very careful conditions for each and every standards the uh, each and every material the standards will be variable so it is made into the national standard laboratory in different countries in different countries this primary standards are used uh, and in the and it is maintained at the national standard laboratory for in india uh, in new delhi the national physical laboratory is there they are follow the national physical laboratory is there they are follow the primary standards these standards are very accurate and it is scientifically possible to achieve these standards are very very accurate and scientifically we can possible to achieve that accurate value it is not available for the outside the national laboratory this primary standards are not available outside the national laboratories and next one is secondary standards these standards are the basic reference for the calibration laboratories and industries they are used for comparison with the working standards these secondary standards are the uh, reference for all the calibration laboratories and industries for the comparison with the working standards each in that industry has its own secondary standard for each and every industry they can produce their own standards secondary standards each laboratory in each industry each laboratory periodically sends a secondary standard to the national standard laboratories in each industry in from that laboratory periodically sends their secondary standard level to the national standard standard laboratories for the calibration and comparison with the primary standards after the comparison and calibration at the national standard laboratories the secondary standards to the particular industry laboratory with a certification of measuring accuracy in terms of primary standards after uh, from uh, each and every industry there's a laboratory for uh, secondary standards from that laboratory they are sending the secondary standards to the national standard laboratory for the comparison calibration of with the primary standards after comparison and calibration the national standard laboratory returns the secondary standards to the particular company with the certification for of measuring accuracy terms in terms of primary standards and the last one is working or territory standards these are the main tools of measuring laboratory working standard or territory standards are the main tools of a measuring laboratory these standards are used to check the check and calibrate laboratory instrument for accuracy and performance these working standards or territory stand, standards are which used to check and evaluate or, and calibrate the measuring instruments time to time for their accuracy and performance improvement for example plug gauge is used for checking the bore diameter of barracks so these are the working or ter territory standards by this the first unit comes to the end thank you